For tonight's edition of the Masterpiece Theater, we'll be taking a look at one of Shakespeare's four great tragedies, King Lear. Taken from Act 1, Scene 1, this highlights some key features found in plays from this genre, with its high-profile, flawed hero, severe breakdowns in communication, and the royal family's greedy lust for power, it's a sure recipe for disaster. Tonight's production offers a rare glimpse into the minds of the characters, as seen through the eyes of the director. Their inner thoughts will be portrayed on screen, despite whatever it is they're saying on the outside. I hope that you enjoy this edition as much as I do. Now the world don't move to the beat of just one drum. What might be right for you may not be right for some. A man is born, he's a man of means. Then along come two. They got nothing but the genes, but they got different strokes it takes. Different strokes it takes. Different strokes to move the world. Meanwhile, we shall express our darker purpose. Give me the map there. Know we have divided in three our kingdom, and tis is our fast intent to shake all cares and business from our age, conferring them on our younger strengths, while we unburthened crawl toward death. Our son of Cornwall, and you, are no less son of Al Albany, we sh have this hour a constant will to publish our daughter's several dowers. The future strife may be prevented now. The princes, Faith and Burgundy, great rivals in our youngest daughter's love, long in our court, have made their amorous sojourn, and here are to be answered. Tell me, my daughters, since now we will divest us bo both of rule, interest of territory, cares of state, which of you shall we doth love us most, that our largest bounty may extend? Where nature doth with merit challenge, Goneril, our eldest born, speak first. Sir, I love you more than word can wield the matter, dearer than eyesight, space, and liberty, beyond what can be valued, rich or rare, no less than life with grace, beauty, health, and honor, as much as child e'er loved or father found, a love that makes breath poor and speech enable, beyond all matter of so much I love you. Of all these bounds, even from this line to this, with shadowy forests and with champagnes rich, with plenteous rivers and wide-skirted meads, we make thee lady to thine and Albany's issue, be this perpetual. What says our daughter, our dearest Reagan, wife of Cornwall, speak? Sir, I am made of the same self-metal that my sister is, and prize me at her worth. In my true heart I find that she names my very deed of love, only she comes too short that I profess myself an enemy to all other joys which the most precious square of sense possesses, and I find I am alone felicitate in your dear highness's love. To thee and thine hereditary ever remain this ample third of our fair kingdom, no less in space, validity, and pleasure than that conferred on Goneril. Now our joy, although the last not least, to whose young love the vines of France and milk of Burgundy strive to be interested. What can you say to draw a third more opulent than your sister's? Speak. Nothing, my lord. Nothing? Nothing. Nothing will come of nothing. Speak again. Unhappy that I am, I cannot heave my heart into my mouth. I love your majesty according to my bond, no more nor less. How, how, Cordelia, mend your speech a little, lest it mar your fortunes. Good, my lord, you have begot me, bred me, and loved me. I return these duties back as they are right fit, obey you, love you, and most honor you. Why have thy sister's husbands, as they love you all? Happily when I shall wed, that lord whose hand must take my flight, shall carry half my love with him, half my care and duty. Sh sure, I shall never marry like my sisters, to love my father all. But goes thy heart with this? I am my good lord. So young and so untender. So young, my lord, and true. Let it be so, thy truth then be thy dower, for by the sacred radiance of the sun, the mysteries 
of Hecate and the night, by all the operation of the orbs, for whom we do exist and cease to be, here I disclaim all my paternal care, propinquity and property of blood, and as a stranger to my heart and me, hold thee from this forever, the barbarous Scythian, or he that makes his generation messes to gorge his appetite, shall be to my bosom, be as well neighbored, pitied and relieved, as thou my sometime daughter. But my liege. Peace, Kent, come not between the dragon and his wrath. I loved her most and thought to set my rest on her kind nursery, hence and avoid my sight. So be my grave, my peace, as here I give her father's heart from her. Call friends, hoosters, call Burgundy, Cornwall, and Albany. With my two daughters, thy dowers digest this third. Let pride, which she calls plainness, marry her. I do not invest you jointly with my power, preeminence, and all the large effects that troop with majesty. Ourself by monthly course with reservation of a hundred nights by you to be sustained shall be our abode. Make with you by doomed terms, only we still retain the name and all the addictions to a king. The sway, revenue, execution of the rest, beloved son, be yours, which to confirm this correct part betwixt you. Royal Lear, whom I have ever honored as my king, loved as my father, as my master followed, as my great patron thought on in my prayers. The bow is bent and drawn, make from the shaft. Let it fall, rather, thou the fork invade the region of my heart. Be Kent unmannerly when Lear is mad. What wouldst thou do, old man? Thinkest thou duty shall have dread to speak? When power to flattery bows, to plainness honors bound? When majesty falls to folly, reserve thy state, and in thy best consideration check this hideous rashness. Answer my life, my judgment, thy youngest daughter does not love thee least. Nor are those empty-hearted whose low sounds reverb no hollowness. Kent on thy life no more. My life I never held but as a pawn to wage against thine enemies. Never fear to lose it, thy safety being motive. Out of my sight! See better, Lear, and let me still retain the true blank of thine eye. Now by Apollo, now by Apollo king, thou swearest thy gods in vain. O oh, vassal miscreant! Dear sir, forbear! Kill thy physician, and the fee bestow upon the foul disease. Revoke thy gift, or whilst I can vent clamor from my throat. I tell thou dost evil. Hear me, recreant on thy allegiance, hear me, since thou hast sought to make us break our vow, which we durst never yet, and with strained pride, to come between our sentence and our power, which nor our nature nor our place can bear, our potency made good, take thy reward. Five days we do allot thee, for provision to yield thee from diseases of the world, and on the sixth day to turn thy hated back upon our kingdom, if on the tenth day following thy banished trunk be found in our dominions, the moment is thy death. Away by Jupiter, this shall not be revoked. Fare thee well, king. Sith thus thou wilt appear, freedom lives hence and banishment is here. The gods to their dear shelter take thee, maid, that justly thinkest and hast most rightly said. In your large speeches may your deeds approve, that good efforts may spring from words of love. Thus Kent, O princes, bid you all adieu, and shape his old course in a country new.